Hi, I'm Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol. Today I'm going to answer a question that many people have asked me about God talking to us and saying certain things and then they don't come true. I think one of the things that we are seeing today more than we ever have is people who use the word very loosely, prophecy. And they are prophesying this and prophesying that and they are saying, God told me this and God told me that. And sometimes you have a little tweak in your spirit that says, check that out. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And it is a crucial subject that we all need to hear. And I'm going to relay it in a story format. Something that happened when my children were very young. I know you're going to enjoy it. One of the things that we always must do is look to how Jesus responds in situations. If you notice, Jesus never said, God told me this or God told me that. Now, if you haven't noticed that before, take a look. It will surprise you. What Jesus did do is he quoted the word. He said what the word of God said. He did not say God spoke to him directly. Do you see the difference? It is crucial to understand. And that's another reason why, like I said, the hair on the back of my neck always seems to stand up a little bit when someone says, well, God told me this and God told me that. And they don't come to pass. Or we know in our spirit that that is not what God says in his word. And anything he tells you, whether it's in a prophetic word, or if it's in a dream, or through a messenger of, of somebody telling you something, it must compute and not contradict. It must confirm the word of God. When my children were young, and my husband traveled a great deal overseas. And he was usually gone anywhere between a week and maybe 10 days at the most. Now, these were the days before cell phones and the Internet. So we had to trust that when he said to us, well, he'll be back in such and such a day. And he had his, his airline ticket that we would show up at the airport to pick him up. There wasn't any other way of communication except by telephone. And you wouldn't do that especially the times when he was in China. Well, one of these times when he said he was going to be home in 10 days, 10 days came and went, and he wasn't there. He didn't show up. Two weeks went by, nothing. Three weeks went by, still no word. Now, fear tried to grip me. So the only way to overcome and combat fear is through the Word of God. And so I searched the scriptures and I began to pray those scriptures, pray those answers that God is with me, He is with my husband, He is my protector, He is my husband's protector, He knows Everything that is going on, he has promised he would keep me. He has promised that he would protect me. And he was my source. Now, this is where it gets interesting. A dear friend of mine who knew that I was going through this and was praying for me, called me one day and said, you can stop praying. And I thought, what does she mean by that? She says, you can stop praying because God had shown her that my husband had died overseas. And that is why I was not hearing from him. Now, I trusted her. She had was a prayer warrior. She had been a close friend. 
But I knew immediately this did not compute with the word of God. That is not what God was saying to my heart, which is always confirmed by his word. All prophecies, all dreams, all messages absolutely must line up with what God's word says. If they don't, we have to ignore them. We have to spit them out, so to, so to say. Well-meaning Christians often love to tell you what they feel God is saying to them. And that's fine. And sometimes it's confirmed and sometimes it isn't. But we need to get a direct line of communication with God who lives in us via his Holy Spirit, which is always confirmed through the word. So when this woman said this to me, I knew that it was not true. I knew it in my heart. I knew it from the scriptures that God had given me to pray that my husband was safe and secure and that he would return. So I chose to reject them. Sadly, I lost that friendship. But there's something more important here, and that is, learning to hear when God speaks to your heart and not listening to those who so easily and quickly say, God told me. Just as Jesus said and quoted the word, that's where our truth comes from. That is where our source comes from. And if we're feeling something in our spirit, it is confirmed in the word, just as the opposite is true. Like in this case, I knew that what she was telling me was not truth. So I wouldn't receive it. And I knew that God's word was my only source. And I just continued to thank God that he had my husband under total and complete protection. I knew it in my heart, and nothing could take that away. But time was passing, and I still had not heard anything. I contacted the airlines, nothing. I contacted uh, Interpol, nothing. I contacted the police, nothing. There was no trace of him. Fear wants to grab you in situations like this. I absolutely had to fight that battle against that fear. There was one time when I was crying and I would often cry my tears in the shower so my kids would not hear me crying because I knew that they were wondering too. And one, one of those times, my son looked at me and he said, Mommy, why are you crying? And I didn't even want to answer him. And he said, Mommy, don't you know that God knows where Daddy is? That God cares about us? That God loves us? That God protects us? And I'm thinking, oh my word, out of the mouths of babe, up babes, out of the mouths of babes comes truth. And I said, thank you, honey. I really needed to hear that, and I gave him a hug. Seven weeks went by, and one day the phone rang, and it was my husband, and he was in at the airport letting me know that he had arrived home safely. He then proceeded to tell me that he had contracted a serious virus in China where he was. And he was in the back part of China. And there weren't any phones. There was very little communication. He had no way to reach me. And when he got sick and he collapsed from this high fever and this virus, a man found him and carried him to his hut. And he nursed my husband for all those weeks using herbs and warm packs and cold packs and whatever else they did to bring him back to life. God protected him. 
even when no one else was around to do that. God sent that servant to bring my husband back around to total health. He did not let him die. God knew where he was. And that's why I got the assurance in my heart that God knew God would answer. God is protecting. You see, God responds to two things, our faith and his word. And they must compute. They cannot contradict. So when I got that word from a well-meaning, trusted friend who said God told her, I knew that was not true because God talks to me through his word and confirms that in my spirit. Thank you for listening. This is Carol with Praying for Miracles with Carol. Many stories like this one are on my website at prayingmiracles.com. You can download them, share them with your friends. There are PDFs there to help you with scriptures that you may need regarding healing or any other type of support that you need in your life. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.